Please, can you rise to your feet, please? Thank you very much. Eshe wo baba, eshe wo Jesu, eshe wo baba, eshe wo Jesu. Kini ba fi son o re re, bi o ti poto la ye wa. Egberu a hanko ma to fun yi re, eshe o jesu. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all. This morning, let our voices rise up, please, in praise, in adoration, in thanksgiving to this God. From January till now, God has been faithful. We are not the same way that we started January 1, 2021. God has blessed us. God has increased us. He has delivered us from shame. He has delivered us from death. He has provided for us. We are not begging on the streets. We are not sleeping under the bridges. We are not in prison. We are not in trouble. That is shameful. Yes, there are challenges, but God has not allowed the plan of the devil to be real in our lives. Let's just lift up our voices this morning and say, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for our families. Lord, we thank you for ourselves. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for our neighborhoods. Mazika Lirakasha Santaria masonto rima kuria reki kakozo korobo shende rebo sonde reba kuria maraka kayele brokozo torobo zente makuka yeki kazunde reba koreba shanda raba santa there are people that were with us first of January they are not alive they are not well they don't even know the Lord we are here because God is faithful unto us let's bless his holy name this morning makose kele brokozo torobo shende reba kuria rika koso koroko sika rakashite rebo Let's cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Let's cover our families with the blood of Jesus. You came from somewhere this morning, from a home, from a neighborhood, from that place to this place. Cover your home with the blood of Jesus. Cover every member of your family near and far with the blood of Jesus. And we will cover everyone in this meeting today with the blood of Jesus. From the set man to the set woman to the pastors, heads of departments, all church workers, all families, we cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Father, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the power of the blood. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus that continually speaks better things on our behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Let's begin to thank the Lord for his mercies. That by his mercies we have not been consumed. And we are here this morning and will, be, will continually be recipients of the mercies of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to lift up this service unto the Lord. From this moment of prayers. Let's invite the presence of the Lord to be with us today. From the, this moment to the time of the praise and worship, let us ask that God will be with us, that His presence will be tangible in the mighty name of Jesus. The administration of the choir, intercession for Nigeria, altar call, the word that is to be ministered by the set man. Pray that every segment of today's service will minister to you. There is a 
reason why God has brought us to his presence today. That will be fed, that will be nurtured, that will be lifted. Let's commit everyone that will minister today into the hands of the Lord. Everyone standing in one position that you can see or you cannot see. Every church worker, let us lift them up unto the Lord. The grace for every office. Father, we receive today for every church worker. In the mighty name of Jesus. The faith for every office. We receive for every church worker. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mazuke le broko soto robo shata. Rika koso korobo sika le broko sonte. Makaka yika koraka zende robo zote. Maraba ba 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 ba. Let's commit the time of the altar calling to the hands of the Lord. That as many as are joining us online. As many as are here. Will not be shy. Will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. We will rise up in confidence. In boldness. And declare Jesus as Lord over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mazike le reke sita. Rika koso korobo shende bo kori. Kayende, rika kaka yele broko zuta, ma jede bada baraba sender bosonde, broko zuka raba shinder bosonde bakuria, raka kaka yeke keke borobo zete, ma rama zika le broko sonte. In Jesus name, amen. We have parents in the in the house, Pastor Taiwo and Pastor Namti Odukoya. Let's lift them up unto the Lord. The plan of the enemy is always to smite the shepherd, that is to attack the leader, and then scatter the sheep. But that will not be our portion or experience in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to cover them with the blood of Jesus. Let's cover them physically, spiritually, every area of their lives. Let's lift up unto God. And Father, we love, if you sincerely love him, tell the Lord if you love him or not. And tell the Lord to protect him. Tell the Lord to bless him. He's always interceding. They're always standing in the gap for us. Let us call upon the name of the Lord for them. They might not tell us their prayer points, but say, Father, I agree with them. That whatsoever they are seeking your face for, Lord God Almighty, do for them in the mighty name of Jesus. As they keep on calling unto you concerning this vision, concerning all our lives. Father, do the miraculous in their lives as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please make sure you are praying wherever you are. Make sure you are praying wherever you are. Let us commit everyone that is Continually in the mighty name of Jesus, they shall not be weary in well doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, fresh grace, Lord God Almighty. A daily refreshing from your presence, oh God. Let your glory continually flow forth unto them. Commit the ministry of the word of God today into the hands of the Lord. That the word that will come from the pulpit today it will transform our lives we will not be left the same way that we have come the word will come and will change us in the mighty name of Jesus there will be testimonies, there will be miracles signs and wonders will back the word of God that will be ministered today in the mighty name of Jesus Lift up every pastor of the Fountain of Life Church locally and internationally supporting the set man and set woman of this house. Their families, every head of department. Let's pray that the Lord will reward everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Every family that is here. Let's extend our prayers unto Nigeria. Let us declare there shall be no war in this nation. Let us declare that every contrary spirit will be held bound and cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of kidnapping, the spirit of corruption, the spirit of unrighteousness We take authority over you today in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that the spirit of the man of darkness will not take over the center of this nation in the name
name of Jesus. But Jesus Christ to be Lord continually over this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every arm of government, Father Lord, we lift up unto you. We cover with the blood of Jesus. We ask, oh God, for wisdom for our leaders. We ask, oh God, that there has to be garrisoned with the fear of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Zika le rabasandar bakuria. Marama sika labrakasata. Reki kazota rabashanda. In Jesus' name. I just want you to look around. Just turn around 360 degrees. Just turn around like this. Just turn around. When you turned around, did you see anybody in the sanctuary? If you saw anybody, can I see with a show of hands? Yes, I want you to pray for everybody. This is not the time to pray for yourself now. Pray for everybody that is here. And everybody that will be in this service, either on site or online, just lift your voices up unto the Lord. And say, Father, we have come to your presence today. Whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever we have come unto your presence for, you are our God and there is nothing you cannot do. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We pray for everyone that will be in this service today. Either on site or online. That Father you will touch us in the mighty name of Jesus. You will touch our situations. You will visit our families in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Finally pray for yourself before we round up. You are here. You know why you are here. You know what you are seeking the face of the Lord for. Sometimes we come to the presence of the Lord and there is no desire. But this morning let it be different. Place a demand upon the anointing of heaven. And say this service will be a memorial unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to write today's date down. I want to say that in this service, the set man spoke a word. And I'm back with the testimonies. Let's lift up our voices unto the Lord. Pray to God for yourself. Not for anybody now. For yourself. For your family. For your situation. Call upon the name of the Lord. Those things you have been saying in secret in your room. Bring them before the Lord this morning. In Jesus name. This is your honor. This is your honor, invisible God, miracle worker. This is your honor. And so, Father, we thank you this morning. You have gathered us together unto yourself. Unto you shall the gathering of your people be. We thank you for the gift of life and we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to your presence so that you can be with us. We invite you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you will tabernacle over this sanctuary this morning. Everywhere the name of Fountain of Life is, O oh Lord God Almighty. We ask for the presence of the Lord to be awesome in our congregation, nationally and internationally, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God Almighty, for a fresh resting of your hand upon the set man and set woman. That, Father, Lord, the purpose for which you have called them, they will fulfill in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit them, spirit, soul, and body into your hands. And we ask, oh God, that as they seek your face on our behalf, Father, Lord, hearken unto them for even their own issues as well in the mighty name of Jesus. The word that will come forth from the pulpit this morning, we declare, Lord, it will transform our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for all the members of the Fountain of Life, Love. No, church. Father, starting from the pastors and their families, heads of departments, oh God, church workers, and every family, oh Lord God Almighty, that is named by this name. We cover everyone with the blood of Jesus, and we ask, oh God, that Father, you will visit every home, visit every situation in the mighty name of Jesus. The entirety of this morning's service, we ask, oh God, that you'll be present, oh God, for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We take authority, Lord God Almighty, concerning, oh God, the ravages of the enemy in this nation. We say it shall no longer come continue in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus shall continually be Lord over this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We worship, we adore you. We say when the altar call is being made, O oh Lord, let men and women be bold enough to rise up, O oh God, and to declare Jesus as their Lord and Savior in the mighty name of Jesus. And when we leave your sanctuary, May we not leave your presence. May your presence go with us everywhere we go. And may we return with our testimonies. May all the praise, all the honor, all the adoration be yours. But let the blessings be for us and for our generation, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord.
a clap offering unto the Lord.
because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence. He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we take refuge refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Let the person that has breath praise the Lord. Give a shout to God if you're alive. Hey! He's worthy. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. Um, there's an acronym. G-O-A-T. Um, it's not GOAT, you know. But it means the greatest of all time. We see exceptional athletes like Muhammad Ali, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, a lot of Michael Jordan, the list goes on. These people have had down times, even in their careers, but there's someone who has never lost a battle. I'm talking about the king of kings. I'm talking about the one who sits king forever. We present to you this morning undefeated. We know it will bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. People infatuated with their own thing Some self-proclaimed they're the GOAT History provides that my God's the one No losses, he's won the most Undefeated Champion Be seated On your throne Ruler, Redeemer, Savior of the world. Who will defeat the sting of death as a man? For a temptation like mine, you've proven your power and showed us the way. So we can win every time. 
Yes, you are. Hallelujah, you're worthy. You're worthy.
Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Good morning, church. Tell somebody I'm glad to be here this morning. Amen. You know, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And the Lord has made this day for us that we may rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to be here. I don't know about you if you are glad to tell somebody. When we come into the presence of God, it gives us an opportunity to pray and seek his face and ask for what we desire. This morning we are going to pray and I'd like us to turn our Bible to the book of Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts chapter 16. Praise God. Amen. Are we there? I'd like us to go to verse 25. This is a very familiar scripture. The Lord is leading us to stand on that scripture to seek the face of God. For God is not a man that he should lie. He never changed. He has loved us with everlasting love. And it's our season where he's showing forth his mercy. Verse 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Praise God. As you have been taught from time to time, you know this, this encounter of Paul and Silas. You are not in the best of place. It was a time of agony. It was time of being held down. They were chained down because there's a common enemy that do not want them to prosper in the way God has called them. Praise the Lord. But rather than complain, they know on whom they have trusted. They know the God that they serve. And therefore they began to call and began to praise him. Why? Because God is beautiful for situation. The situation that they were in was a bad one. But they decided to begin to thank God. Wherever you are today, it's not new to God. God's eyes are not shut that he's not seeing them. But it's a transition. You are moving to a higher level. It's a year where we are possessing our possession. And therefore, even what the, the nation is facing today is not... It's not hidden to God, but he waits for us to cry unto him because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The people of God, whenever they cry unto him, he hears them. This morning is hearing us, even as we rise up this morning to pray. The earthquake that happened in that prison, it was localized. It was not the whole city. The earthquake came and there were, every foundation was shaking. And they were released. That same thing is going to happen this morning. If you believe that, say hallelujah. It's going to happen every area for which this nation has been bound. All the insurgencies we are facing, all the banditry that we are facing, the kidnapping, they have foundation. There's going to be a localized earthquake that will hit them today. And all the foundation shall be shaken. They shall be delivered. And this nation shall not go under. All those who are planning and trying to turn this nation or inviting all kinds of mercenaries, they will be doomed. Because you and I are going to stand to begin to pray. Shall we open our mouth and begin to declare this morning? The Lord has visited. Paul and Salah is visiting us. Let's thank him for his goodness. Thank him that we have a nation. Thank him for sustaining us as a nation. Thank him for his greatness. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. Therefore, we begin to stand. Who asks that whatever we desire, we should ask. He is a God that nothing is impossible for. Let's pray this morning to begin to intervene in this situation. That we have in this nation, whether it's our economy, whether it's all the violent, the security challenge that we have, we cry unto God this morning that there begin to be an earthquake where the foundation will be. Shaken.
shaking and there will be a deliverance in the name of Jesus. We are praying for a national deliverance. We release the power of God to activate earthquake in all the foundations behind the various insurgencies that we have, the Boko Haram, the kidnappers, and all the violent threat that we've been experiencing in the name of Jesus, the banditry, there are people behind it today. Father, we call upon you to stretch forth your hand and let there be a total annihilation of all those who are behind this, that they may know that we serve a living God, that they may know that when the children of God pray, something happens. Father, we thank you. We speak forth of a new Nigeria, new Nigeria with the fear of God, new Nigeria with justice, new Nigeria that will flourish. Nigeria shall not go under. The spirit of the man of darkness shall not rule over our land in the name of Jesus. The Lord has established the body of Christ as the light, his light to this nation. Let's begin to pray, therefore. It is time for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let's begin to pray for unity and all those who also have risen up against the body of Christ. We pray this morning just as the Lord did, even in the midst of Paul and Silas, we are praying this morning. To do the same, all those who are masterminding various attempts against the body of Christ, we pull them down. Let them be swallowed alive. Let their foundation be destroyed. Father, we ask that you begin to open doors. Every gate that has been locked against the body of Christ, we command them to be lifted up and let the King of Glory begin to come in. Mare Mose Keteri Basandarabasela Brose Kete. We pray for unity, for oneness, signs and wonder following the body of Christ. Thanking you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to pray, same for the fountain of light. Thank God for this mission, for this work. Thank God for the set man. Begin to pray. We are not unaware of the devices of the enemy. We know that there are forces that have risen up against this work. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Let therefore begin to pray for increased grace, increased unction, increased wisdom for the set man in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak forth whatever forces that have been withstanding increase, increase. We ask God from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west to bring people, let the place be filled of let every wall that is standing against people coming in, we pull them down. Release the earthquake against all the enemy of this assembly and decree that only the counsel of God in the name of Jesus. His word that he spoke in time past continue to thrive. He said where the carcass is there shall the eagle gather. We call all the eagles to begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Pray for this service, decree today that God is visiting us with his power, with his healing, with wisdom, with understanding, with deliverance, with ideas. His glory shall manifest in this place like never before today. Speak for healing, speak for salvation of soul, both here and in an the online platform. The Lord is out to do wonders. We shall live your rejoicing in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you desire. Pray for yourself this morning for this service. God is visiting us. It's a month of God's enduring faithfulness. His faithfulness shall be made manifest in another dimension today in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank him for what he's about to do. Tell him to take all the glory, take all the honor. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We glorify your name. Blessed be your name. Thank Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. And the people say, God bless you. Let's be seated.
Good morning and welcome to this episode of Fountain News. I am OK, Onye Kuluje. The Vineyard Project Committee would like to thank everyone for giving and praying along with the recipients of the project. You are encouraged to continue giving and interceding for our persecuted and displaced brethren. Now, you can give through the following means. Checks written in favor of the Fountain of Life Church Vineyard Project, Online transfers to TFOLC Projects, GT Bank account number 045-290-7929, and cash donations in envelopes marked Vineyard Project. You can also reach the project committee by sending an email to vineyardproject at tfoc.org or by sending an SMS or WhatsApp message to 0913-274-7325. God bless you as you continue to give and pray. The Digital Media Store would like to invite old and new volunteers to support in the distribution of messages after each service. To join or request further information, please visit the Digital Media Store immediately after the service. God bless you as you volunteer your service. The scripture in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. As you go out this week, you are encouraged to invite people to come to Jesus as he is the only one who can truly lighten their burdens and give them rest. Tracts for evangelism are available at the reception, so please pick up some on your way out of the auditorium. Now, if you're in London this season, remember, the Fountain of Life Church London has resumed her on-site services. The Sunday service starts at 11 a.m. at her new location, and the address is Basement 234 Trafalgar Road, North Greenwich, London, SE 109ER. For more details, please visit her website, www.tfoc.org.uk. The Children's Church holds both on-site and online today. Please note that the online classes start at 9 a.m. Home Fellowship holds this evening at 6 o'clock. Singles Fellowship holds tomorrow at 6 p.m. Don't forget to join the online Bible study this Tuesday at 6 p.m. as we'll continue the discussion on the topic, the teachings on the Beatitudes. Prayer meeting follows at 6.45 p.m. and child service holds online and on-site this Thursday at 9 a.m. The daily webinar prayers hold Monday to Friday from 11.30 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. Before we go, here are some things to remember when walking on the road. Whether you're coming to church from your car or bus stop, or going back to your car, bus stop, home, or anywhere else, please walk on the pavement or sidewalk. And if there is none, walk on the edge of the road facing traffic. In Nigeria, this is usually the side of the road to your left. This gives you the best chance to see traffic approaching and take quick action when necessary. When walking on the road with children, keep them to your side farther away from the traffic. And please avoid texting, making or receiving calls while crossing or walking on the road. Remember, you can watch every service live at tfolc.org, on the church app, and on all our social media platforms wherever you go. If for any reason you cannot watch, you can just listen to the service live by visiting the same website. Now, if it was your birthday or wedding anniversary last week, or if it is today, we'd like to say a lot of prayer over you. So please rise for recognition. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Celebrants, can you just wave so we can see you? Praise the name of Jesus. We rejoice with you. And for those celebrating their birthdays, we pray that God will strengthen you continually in the name of Jesus. May you never have a better yesterday. And may the Lord grant you a gift that will gladden your heart and glorify him in Jesus' name. And for those celebrating the wedding anniversaries, Pastor Benga and Sister Yomi, congratulations, 32 years. Please celebrate them. 
It's not a joke. 32 years. Many more we celebrate in Jesus' name. Peace and joy in the mighty name of Jesus. And to others as well, God will keep your home sweet. In the name of Jesus. The troubles that are plaguing unions today will not plague your home in the name of Jesus. In your old age, you shall still be together. And join the fruit of your labor together in the name of Jesus. We rejoice with you. We celebrate with you. Congratulations once again. You may please have your seats. There's some special ones in our midst this morning. Those that are coming here for the first time. If you fall into that category, can you please rise for recognition? Today is your first time at the Fountain of Life Church. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. Half of our senior pastor and the entire church, we welcome you to the Fountain of Life Church. We are a happy family. Praise the name of Jesus. And for those online as well, we welcome you. And we thank you for being a part of this service. If you belong to a Bible believing church where the word is preached undiluted, we encourage you to please go back there and uphold the servant of God and put in your quota. And ensure that the mandate of that commission is fulfilled. But if you're looking for a home church, we recommend to you the Fountain of Life Church. As you can see, we're a happy family and we have plenty of room to receive you. Please enjoy this service. And I'm sure the ushers have given you a form to fill. Please fill and give us your correct details. We won't ask you for money. It's for us to keep in touch with you and to pray along with you. So fill in the forms and return the forms to the ushers. And if you're online, send us a mail, fountain at tf4lc.org. Let us know how you've enjoyed this service. Praise the name of Jesus. We can assure you, at the time we share the grace, at the end of this service, you will have a testimony in Jesus' name. Please have your seats and enjoy the rest of the service. We have a promise for this week and God speaks to us every week and today is no different the promise for this week Luke chapter 1 verse 37 praise the name of Jesus let me draw your attention to the graphics on the screen if you look to my right your left we can see an image there of a boat with a huge rock on it. How many of us can see it? Praise the name of Jesus. But if you look closely, you will see that it's a paper boat. I remember when I was younger, I'm still young, we used to make paper boats. And the moment you put that boat on water, in a matter of seconds, <laughs> the boat starts to sink. Why? The paper will get wet and it sinks. But here, there's a paper boat carrying a rock, yet it's not sinking. The promise says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. The choir sang a song. Why are you weighed down? Can you see no solution? Why don't you look up to the hope of our salvation? On the 15th of April, 1912, the Titanic, the most luxurious passenger carrying vessel of that time, built with the best of technology, set off from the, from the coast of England off to America. It's so much pomp and pageantry. 
And they interviewed the captain of the ship. And he said so many things about the boat, about the ship. And he said one thing. He said, not even God can sink this ship. The rest is history. The ship set off. They didn't make it. Why? Because somebody boasted that not even God can sink this ship. Made with the best of man's technology. But here we have a paper boat that is not sinking. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. If God can feed thousands with five loaves of fish and two fish, what can he not do? If God can open up the ground and the enemies of his own disappeared and the ground closed again and there's no trace that they ever, that they ever lived, what can God not do? If God can cause water to turn to wine, what can God not do? If God can position a fish with a corn in its mouth to save his own people from shame, what can God not do? If God can cause the barren to keep house, example, Abraham and Sarah, what can God not do? Praise the name of Jesus. I don't know where you are this morning. The Bible says in the easy to read version that God can do anything. And I'll close with this. The Passion Translation. Not one promise from God is empty of power. Nothing is impossible with God. Beloved, can you trust God this morning? Regardless of the challenges, regardless of the weight you're carrying, there's nothing God cannot do. If God can give Jacob the wisdom to cut a piece of wood and just make some markings on it to cause sheep, I mean to cause animals to reproduce like they've never done before, what can he not do to make a way for you? Beloved, be rest assured. As you trust God, there's nothing God cannot do. Can you rise to our feet? I don't know where you are at this morning. I don't know what is before you. I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what the challenge may be. But beloved, there is nothing impossible with our God. Can we just thank him for that promise? And let us decree that this week as we step out, blessings every step of the way impossible situations will be turned around in the name of jesus close doors that men cannot open god will open on our behalf that where men laughed at us god will cause them to favor us and to laugh with us because god can do anything don't close the case on yourself because god is still at work in our lives father we thank you for this promise as we hold on to your word, we are confident we'll return with testimonies to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. It can never ever exist. Oh, you do not lie, you do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh, it can never ever exist. Do not lie, you, you do, do not lie, you do not fail. What is wrong for you to do? It doesn't exist, it can never ever exist. Lord, you do not lie, you do not lie, you do not fail. What is wrong for you to do? It doesn't exist. Give him praise.
the God of all impossibilities. No impossibilities exist with him. The unchangeable changer. The creator that was not created. Let's just worship him. Let's honor his heaven. You know, he does it exist so it will never Hallelujah. Somebody wave those hands and worship him this morning. He alone is Zion's king.
Father, take all the glory. We worship you. We honor you. We reverence you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. The hymn we sang today, I love it. I would like us, worshipfully, to take the first verse again. Give me, not me tempo slower. I come to the garden ah. alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy of a truth he is my lover he is my glory he is the lifter of my head of a truth now I know I am the apple of his eyes he wants it to be personal He loves you so dearly. Nobody can describe it. He wants you to know it in a way that no one else can describe it. I'm praying that your experience with him henceforth we be in this dimension because he loves me. I
for the whole world. But see, I'm coming to realize that he died for me. He loves me. I'm telling someone here today, don't let the devil tell you a lie. That's the kind of relationship he has with you. And what we've been thinking about is the kind of fellowship he wants to have with you. You are special. You are special. You are special. It cost him his life. Though he took it back after accomplishing the purpose. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Just before you sit down, just tell him thank you. I appreciate him. You may be seated. Please hold your mics. I'm glad you are in church today. And I'm grateful for the privilege of standing before you one more time. I want to continue with what we started talking about last Sunday. I'm so excited about it. I see it everywhere I turn in the Bible. You know, that's the way God deals with people. When he's calling your attention to something, every scripture is interpreted in the light of God's revelation for that moment. Amazing God. Exodus in chapter 33. You know, we started reading from verse 12. Can I just read a bit earlier? Then I'll get to that place. For verse 7 says, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord, everyone who sought the Lord, went out to the tabernacle of meeting went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended, hallelujah, and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And he walked with me, and he talked with me, and he tells me I am his own. We carry them another as Thank you. All the people saw the pillar of clouds standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he will return to the camp. May his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, 
a young man did not depart from the tabernacle. I mean, it was so glorious that Joshua would not want to leave. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me all the time, bring up this people. Or have you said to me, bring up this people? But you have not let me know whom you were sent with me. Yet you have said to me, often you say to me, I know you by name. And you have found grace in my sight. You are my favored one. Now therefore I pray. If I have found grace in your sight, which of course he had, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Can I make a pronouncement right now? Because it is the truth. The dimension of rest you have never experienced in your life. Begin to enjoy. In the name of Jesus. That knowing trouble, God will give you rest. In, it. in the name of Jesus. Now, I read this far to summarize where we're coming from. And I want you to know that this was coming on the heel of, you know, some bad situation where they had supported God. Where they had substituted God with a golden calf. And they had worshipped the golden calf. They had actually trampled on what is, I would say was, most important to God. You say, what was it that was that important to God? His glory. They were given the glory that belonged to God to the golden car. They were singing and dancing before the car and worshiping. And it so happened that that was at a time that God was in a fellowship with Moses. That God had to call Moses' attention to the noise coming from below. It was such a bad situation that some people lost their lives. And that God, God saying things like, you know what, let me wipe them off. I'm sure you will argue that, but, it's, but wasn't he the covenant keeping God? Didn't he, in the covenant, spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I hope you understand too that Moses was a descendant of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he said, I will raise others through you. It was TB working within the broadly, I mean the, the broad way of the covenant. So when he said, You've hung here for too long, come on, take the people whom you brought out. What he said, Ha. Ah. Who will go with me? Because you don't normally talk that way. When you say that, when you talk that way, you I'm up front to say, I will be with you. But you didn't say that. Instead, you said, I won't come in the midst of you lest I destroy you. Because you're a stiff naked people. You say, Hi, something is wrong. And please know, sir, these are your people. Hey, uh, a lot of times we struggle to have our own people. Our own people. Uh, it's God that owns the people. Please know that these people are your people. And if you destroy them, then what will the heathens say? Anyway, so much for that. We spoke on that last week. 
And that explain why he now said, show me your way that I may know you. You know why? Because he knew that ultimately it was his glory that mattered. What had been injured, oh, that is vis-a-vis -vis the people's behavior, was his glory. And no matter the kind of gifting God has given you, or the kind of opportunity he is opening up to you, or the kind of platform he has placed to you, or whatever you may be going through in terms of adversity and trials, please remember that his glory is at stake. He's watching his glory. And he will not leave a stone unturned to maintain and to sustain and to achieve his glory. That's why the Bible will say, you are created for his glory. We are created for his glory. Everything created has been created for his glory. And for thy pleasures they are. For, I mean, for thou hast created for thy pleasure they are and were created. The weddings of the worship songs before the throne. For his glory. And that was why he would say, no, I thank you because you are a covenant-keeping God and that was why you will come back. And that explains right, right, why you will say, now let's proceed. I will keep my word and I will go before you. Fine. I will clear the Jebusites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Hittites and the... Thank you. And that land sure is filled with milk and honey. Thank you. But I won't go with you. You will go before us and you won't go with us. No, sir. There is still something amiss. God has always desired to be in the midst of his people. Honestly, he's always desired. In fact, not that he desires. You are created to be a vessel of his glory. And he had his timetable. At that time, the more that happened that it would be in the midst of his people. And the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. That's Old Testament. It will be better in the New Testament. So he understood. He said, but show me your way so I can know you. So I want to know exactly how to move, what to say, what to do, to ensure that you come in our midst. But you see, the mess of God that he is, he understood where Moses was going. So he answered him, I will, my presence will go with you, not need you anymore. And I will give you rest. Let me say it again in the name of Jesus. I'm praying and I decree. I say for the rest of your life, you will walk in the rest of God. Oh yes. It will get better and better for you in the name of Jesus. God did not intend and still does not intend that your life will be full of just troubles and troubles and troubles. Sometimes, like I said last Sunday, I look at certain lives and I'm like, okay. But see, even such assignments, they end up in glory. Come on, the life of David. There came a time that he gave him rest all around. And he established his throne. You can imagine ordaining him and for 17 years or 13 to 17 years thereabout. But God ordained him and called him king. 
and the devil fought it. Why? Because God allowed it. Why? Because he was created to fight God's wars. No wonder he never, he never lost one. I say your days of losses are over. In the name of Jesus. And God established his throne in such a way that eternally his throne will remain. Eternally. Eternally. No other person. Even the throne of Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived up to today, his throne was in forever. But David, so you know what that tells me? There are certain things that in your assignment you will touch. It will be turned up. In the name of Jesus. We're talking of the covenant keeping God. And with, of course, of his mercies that are new every morning. Glory be to God in the highest. I said, glory be to God. Ah, he just said to me, Shakata. He said, you will live your life in peace. Oh, yes. He's correcting me. He says, say the right word. You will live satisfied. <laughs> afraid for your children afraid of he said I have satisfied your generations ahead of you yeah show me your glory and you'll have thought why will you be asking such an impossible thing thank God with God nothing is impossible thank you Pastor Femi that was a very good illustration fantastic and thank God for what you did in the first service Pastor Mary it was prophetic what we saw in the afternoon was come on line by line it was very good blessing what we saw in the, service, in the first service was prophetic God comes in different ways And that's why I'm certain that this afternoon something will be deposited that will be eternal <laughs> in your lives in the name of Jesus. And like it's happening in your life, it's happening in my life. You say, really? That's how he operates. That's how he operates. When he visits a congregation, he visits the congregation. Can't you see Moses say, no, I know I'm enjoying fellowship, but it's for us. One thing you will understand, but it's time we go, I feel the fire now, when you go deeper, when your desire is his glory, two, two things will follow you. Richly, you say, well, the spirit of worship and the spirit of intercession. You know what intercession does? It flows on the crest of compassion. You will see people and there will be a cry and a, and a hunger to reach out. And you will open your mouth and God will honor it on their behalf. In his presence. In his presence. So he said, show me your glory. And God said, you know what? Let me take it from there because that's really what I want to really talk on today. He said, Mmm, robber, He'll 
be more real to you at least than he, than he has been until now in the name of Jesus so the Lord said to Moses I will in verse 17 also do these things which you have spoken for, for you have found grace in my sight and I know you by name this allude to covenant so he said show me your glory then he said, I will make, now, I would have thought that God would hesitate or God would say, you are asking for a hard thing. Remember when Elijah said, can I have a double portion of the anointing? Elijah said, you are asking a hard thing. But if, no, God didn't do that. He, 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 he was just asking for the for double portion of the anointing. Can you imagine Moses saying, God, show me your glory. He's asking for much more. God didn't hesitate. And that's what covenant does. My prayer today is that you come, you come more alive to your right in the covenant. And I, I mean, we all do. That's my prayer in the name of Jesus. So God didn't hesitate. Here what follows. And in verse 19, then God said, immediately God said, mm, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Uh, he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see my face, and leave. We dealt with this last week, talking about all of my goodness, holding nothing back. And we look at it, he said, he talks about the estate and everything he has. He said, I'll, I'll put them at your disposal. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. You heard Jesus said the same thing when he was saying, I will send you another helper, the Holy Spirit. He said he will take of what is mine and reveal it to you. He said, listen to me, everything that the Father has is mine. Can you imagine? Everything. That's in the, same con in the same way that God was speaking to Moses. Everything has. That's why I said he will take what is mine and reveal it to you. In other words, I'm bringing you into the commonwealth of the Godhead. Dangerous, isn't it? I will make all of my goodness pass before you. And we kind of looked into this book of, I'm sorry, into, the, into Strong's uh, dictionary last Sunday here. And of course, he said, in, inner joy, abundance of the field, everything, the, absolutely everything that God has. And I just quickly wrote on the mind, I said, all that pertains to life and godliness, everything. That we cater for every need you have and will ever have. Everything. I will make it flow before you. He said, but you cannot see my face, and no man shall see me and leave. Then the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be why my glory. Now, quickly, quickly, if you are using Bible to interpret Bible, he said, I will make all my goodness to pass before you. But now he's referring to the same thing, just some five verses later, he said, all my glory. So when he says my glory, he means all my goodness, everything, everything, everything. And now if I should take one of belabor that a little bit, uh, you know, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, all of my goodness. And that good, how, how, how is it described in that verse? He said, healing all who are oppressed of the devil, that is delivering them and restoring them. And that defines God's goodness. Come on, is somebody hearing me? No, pastor, it's old and new testament. Eh, check for their meaning differently. You go to the Hebrew and Greek Bible, you'll be amazed that God is good means God is good in any language. His message is endure forever. He, that's what it means in every language. His message is endure forever. That's what it means. So all that pertains to life and godliness. That's a disposal. He said, but then, the only thing is this. There is a place. There is a position. There is a place you must be for that to happen. By my side. Before I explain further, okay, I'll go ahead. By my side, 
where you'll be standing on the rock, not a rock, the rock. And when I'm about to pass with all my goodness, I will hide you in the rock. And I will cover the face of the rock with my arm. So that by the time I've passed with all my goodness, you will see my back. Because if you see my face, you won't leave. You know why? Because it wasn't time for God to appear onto the visible view of man. But he will. He said, what do you mean? The question is this. What did Moses see? Who did he see? What? Talk about his goodness or his glory. What did he see? He saw the similitude of a man the back of a man, not of a goat, not of a beast, not of a fish, a man. And guess what? Hebrews chapter 1 in verse 3, he said, the entire brightness of the glory of God and the exact representation of God, he said, you see it in the face of Jesus. So Moses' question was begging the future, was talking the heart of God for the future. Because Moses knew that whether you lived in the first century or you lived in the 40th century, <laughs> his glory is the end. So before I get there, what do you think now in the New Testament? You are not only standing on the rock, you are hidden in the rock. But he said, I will do that. Then that's when you can appreciate all oh my goodness. Like, what if God didn't do that? He will pass, you won't see. He said, really? On the platform with the pastors, I was telling them, look, is it chapter 19? When Jesus, the glory of God, took James, Peter, and John up the mountain, tell your neighbor, say, congratulations. Because what you are hearing will change you. In the name of Jesus. It's changing me, that's why. They stood in his presence. The Bible said, as a man, he did something there. What did he do? What Moses did? What did Moses do? Moses prayed, show me. Jesus prayed, and he began to manifest his glory. <laughs> the Bible said, suddenly, his whole appearance began to change. His body his remains, everything, they became so dazzling that no living could stand because to see that would be dangerous. And suddenly, Moses and Elijah, the same Moses, appeared and they were talking with him. Uh, Peter, I'm sure, took his, his sneak look. Wow. And by the time he opened his mouth, he said, it is good we are here. Oh my goodness. You know what that tells me? You are able to talk in the glory. So what are you saying in the glory? I put it to you today that to open your mouth in the glory is to cause an effect in the physical. I'm not joking. I, I'm, I'm not telling you stories. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm telling you the real thing. You'll see it in the New Testament. It's not enough to... At that point, there is, there's a provocation of a demand. But when I feel the fire, when we take it for granted, we begin to wonder, then we get used to it. I don't need to fall. I, I just only have to design this presence. Whether I fall or not, designing this presence is all, all I need. Mm. 
They were there, the two of them. But do you know that they did not know that they were under the glory? They changed by the time they resurrected. Go read the book of Peter. You hear something like exceeding joy. You hear things about this about joy that will blow your mind. You read things about the glory that you say, wow. So I said that to say it's possible to be under the glory. But Moses took advantage and said something. And so everything began to happen. Then the next thing he says, I'll make all my goodness to pass before you. I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. The true but a little covenant. Why? These are the characters, the qualities of the glory of God. So provoking, I mean, proclaiming his name, I will invoke my covenant, so to say. Which he did. Look at the next chapter, 34. I won't read everything. He now said to him from verse 1, take two um, tablets and come up and I want to write some, I mean, the law on it, I mean, what you have broken. Verse 5, now the Lord descended and you come up the mountain, Mount Sinai, only you, no man and no beasts around there. Look at verse 5. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood within there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. He said, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. Now, he proclaimed the name of the Lord. So what was the proclamation? Look at it. Look at it yourself. What was it? How did he proclaim? The Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children and the children upon um, to the third and fourth generation. So Moses made it. Now, how did they proclaim? He, de- he invoked the covenant right there with Moses. So what did he do with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He said to them, I'm cutting a covenant with you, but he never, never invoked this to them. And that's why we say, look, 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 Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they know me by my name, the Almighty. El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, he satisfied all of their needs. He said, but Moses knew me as the covenant God. Jehovah, Yahweh. That didn't mean that they were not operating the covenant. They did. But there was a revelation to Moses. So Moses missed and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray. Come on, Moses. Because when the glory comes down, it provokes worship. Bow. It provokes intercession. <laughs> Some uh, some in some ministries they work that way they wait until the worship is christened I mean I want to use the christened of worship like Ooh. at that time they say make your request but they don't have to say that there must be standing in you like oh, the God of all flesh you are sick you say the great healer you are lacking you say the great provider he's part of worship you are being misjudged. You said, ah, the vindicator. The deliverer. He provokes worship and intercession. Can you imagine? And hey, God honored it immediately. Watch the next verse. And God said, behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people, 
I will do marvelous. What I'm saying is, you can provoke God power at any time. That was Moses. That was Old Testament. Before I jump to the New Testament, which I'm going right away now because of my time, let me say some things about what I think about Moses in my meditation. Number one, Moses has taught me that in the presence of God, don't keep quiet except where you are listening. Don't keep your mouth short when you have a need in his presence, except as you are listening for his instruction. He said, what do you mean? Moses, immediately God began to fellowship and fellowship with him, and God said to him, now move. And he listened well. And he was able to pick it. Oh, the thing was fine. He could have jumped. He said, yeah. He said, no, you have to come with me. There's something missing. You go before me. I agree. The place is good. Yeah, you clear them out. Yeah. But you said the people. No, no, no. Said the, I brought. No, no. They are your people, sir. You say I'm not going in the midst of them. I'll go before them. Mm, sir, come. But that's not even where I'm going. So, but that gave me opportunity to say, sir, you have to come. He opened his mouth and he asked. He asked what was needed. Do you know what the Bible tells us? If you don't ask, you don't get it. It's not because God is not perfect. It's not because God has not done it. God expects you to live by faith. Trust him enough to say, sir, can I have it? Why will he say, of my promises, remind me? You think he forgets? Oh, you're afraid it won't happen. You are in his presence and you are doubting him. God have mercy. Isn't that what we do a lot of times when we gather together in church and in our fellowships? The power of God was mighty. Ha, shakata, ba, 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 ba. What did you do with it? Don't you know that when you believe that God was present, that's when you should ask the impossible. Ask for the impossible to be done. Jesus teaching, you know what he said? He said, ask and you'll get. Seek and you'll find. Knock the door shall be opened. You see, your, 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 your great service does not impress God. Your gym, 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 gym fellowship does not impress God. Except as you're able to trust him in his presence right there. Yeah, yeah. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. He that cometh to God must believe that he is uh, and that he will reward your diligence of seeking him. Uh-uh. They just shall live by faith. That same verse 6 says, without faith you cannot please God. So you cannot really glorify him except you have to trust him. Pastor, it will take heaven to come down. Fine, if God is here, heaven will come down. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Moses taught me that. Then it follows to say, your desires begins to shoot up, even in his presence. Really? Yeah. What do you mean desire? Because God created all of us to have desires. The Bible says he grants the desires of every, every living thing. If you are a creature of God, whether you are an animal or a plant, or a man, you have desire. And yet God meets all desires. So desire is no sin. But it is what you desire that can constitute sin. So I recognize there, that at that point, Moses recognized that, look, I have a longing. I have a desire. There are certain things I like to see vis-a-vis God. And he started talking. You know, I was thinking of that, then, of course, uh, God, God led me to uh, Proverbs, yes, I think chapter 10, verse 24. It says, <laughs> I like the version of, um, is, it the, is, it, is it the Passions Bible? Yeah, Proverbs 10, 24. 
quick, 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 put it there, put it there, quick, 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 help me. I need to see. Proverbs 10. Yeah. Is it there? Okay, good. The lawless are haunted by their fears. Did you hear that? And what they dread comes upon them. But look at the other side. But the longings, the desire of the righteous will be fulfilled. You know, I was thinking that I was discussing with A.G. AG. Son, we are blessed. I said, look, there's something I want to ask you. I said, listen to this. Fear. And desire. They flow through the concourses of your creativity. I said, wait a minute. The first thing I thought, I said, course. I said, no, concourses. The channels. Do you know that everything you need to have them met will begin to crystallize as a desire? And what you do will be determine how you land. If you allow fear to paralyze you, that will determine the result. That's, a, that's creating something. That's the creativity. And it's negative. And you wonder why this able-bodied, intelligent, good-looking, what's wrong with them? There's something wrong. Fear produces. But on the other side, the one that knows, except God helps me, I, I can't get there, but I have to get there. It was how I was talking to you yesterday. I said, look, not the grammar, look at the philosophy for me. It says, desires are born. How did I put it to you? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. I said desires are born in a man by two things. Motivation and inspiration. Is what you mean. What about when you just talk about fear? Uh -uh. Because the two of them will come from the environment. When you see somebody that you think should not have it, having it, you say, why can't I have it? So you are inspired by the fact that, ah, in spite of all the odds, look at what, see what he's doing, see what she's doing. Or by the time you see that something that could not happen, happen for somebody, you are motivated by what he just did. It's your environment. But if you are intimidated by your need that you think can never be met, fear rules. Moses will not be intimidated. The environment was such a catastrophe, but he had the opportunity of the presence of God. He asked for the glory of God. He asked for the seemingly impossible. He got it. I speak to somebody here today. Hallelujah. Is it better? Is it better? All right. Is it better? Uh -huh. I speak to somebody here right now. In the name of Jesus. The things that seek to kill you is the same thing that God will use to celebrate you. In the name of Jesus. Where in your life the things the devil is trying to take advantage of that he's stacking up against but because you've come to terms uh, with the end of all things, this is glory that matter. Watch the same place where they ridiculed you among themselves. They will be the first to carry the black card. Praise God! Bless the Lord!
God for this person. In the name of Jesus, I'm talking of the glory of God. All of his goodness flowing past you. They are not passing you to leave you by. They are constantly, uh, uh, come on, they are washing you over. They are blowing over you. Come on, they are blowing over you. I like what what our rabbi says. He said, the blessings of God are always approaching you. Miracles are always running towards you. What do you do with it? Paralyzed by fear and let them just flow past. Or rising up and coming boldly to the throne of grace. Because now he said, look, my glory will invoke my covenant boldly to the throne of grace. Why? To for what? Obtain mercy and find grace for every need in your life. Moses taught me something. Hear this. Psalm 37 verse 4. The desires of the heart of the righteous, God will grant. Oh, is it nowhere? Maybe that's not it. But there's no one that says, delight yourself, I think that's it, in the Lord. And he will grant you the desires of your heart. I like that. Delight yourself in the Lord. Now, having said that, remember, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears. And if he hears, then please take it. It is done. That's what the Bible says. And then we have the desire to say, then we should take it that it is done. Jesus said, whatever you ask me, or ask for me, I will do it for you, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I'll come back to that. Now, having said this about Moses, let's get into the New Testament. Help me turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Seven. But if the ministry of death, written and, en- written and engraved on stones, was glorious, that is what we just read about Moses, go back and study it. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because the glory of his countenance, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away? Why, why, why passing away? Because he was fading. He could not sustain it. Initially, when they saw him, they fled. But the more they talked to him, the more this thing was fading. So he had his face covered. It was covered because, I mean, as long as he was here talking with the people, it is, was fading and fading and fading. But when he returned to God, he opened it again so that it had increased. Moses was smart. He will unveil before God. He will veil before man. Why? Because no matter the glory of man, it will wane and fade. Have you seen your photographs when you were when you were in the secondary school, primary school, secondary school? Wow. Then university, wow. Then you became 30 something. Yes. And 40. They say you look good for 40, you know. And they're telling, they're telling you are old, man. And then 50 something, yeah. Say 60, you are still moving, you are jumping. They are telling, ah, you are an old man, okay? But you see, you are, you are not the same. Something is fading away. Such is everything on this side of heaven. But on the other side, it gets stronger. Uh, yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, where did I stop? Verse 8. And the face, because of the glory, yeah, yeah. verse 8. How will they say, if the ministry of death, verse 7, written and engraved on stones, was glorious? Now look at verse 8. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Good. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteous, righteousness exists much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect, because of the glory that excels. <laughs> For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness. What hope? That is, in spite of anything that you may be going through, in spite of all the lies of the devil, there is something better for you. Why? Because, look, 
you are a creature of his presence. Is it not in the New Testament? It says that if anybody be in Christ, is a new creation. It is in Christ. Come on, is somebody here with me? There he said, by my side. But the truth, the reality of it is this. By my side means being in Christ in the New Testament. He's beyond by my side. He said, I will hide you in the crevice of the... Oh, no, no, you're already in the crevice of the rock in Christ Jesus. He's the eternal rock of ages. Come on, is somebody here with me? Glory be to God in the highest. So if I say he's a new creature, if you're a new creature, you are... If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Come on, Christians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10, the fullness of the Godhead readily dwells where? In God, in the God. Godhead in mind of Lord and you come on say me I'm complete in him can't you see that you are positioned for an unusual manifestation of his glory already the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 verse 28 Paul was talking to them he said but you guys know that it is in him we live we move and we have our being let no devil tell you no lie God has positioned you to manifest his glory. No, but it's true. It's true. I can go on. Every in him scripture, any in womb scripture, every in Christ scripture, oh my goodness, that's all we find in the epistles. That's who we are. That's where we are. Now, Moses had a, had some knowledge. My question is this. Do you know who you are? In the name of Jesus, that body that you have carried forever, in the name of Jesus, with the realization that you're having today, I say, let it fall off in the name of Jesus. After the Bible says that by the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. Come on. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good. What was the good? Destroying, I mean, healing all who are oppressed of the devil, oppressed in your marriage, oppressed in your health, oppressed in your finances, oppressed in your Christian work, oppressed in your ministry, oppressed in your endeavor, oppressed in your relationship. Come on, healing in the name of Jesus. He said, For this cause, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. You are positioned. You are fully decked. You are anointed. I close with this quickly. I don't, I mean, because of my time. It's Second Corinthians chapter 3. Oof, no, Romans chapter 8. I'll just read from verse 30 straight away so that I don't. 29. 28. Now he who searches the heart, 27, knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know, I like Paul, we know, glory be to God in the highest. I'm expecting your testimony. In the name of Jesus. And we know that all things I said, all of my goodness. I know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are the called according to his purpose, who are the called according to his purpose, who are the covenant children of God. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, and whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also... Who? Is there any called in this house? Is there any justified in this house? Is there any glorified in this house? Can you see how God does it? He glorifies a vessel that will become the source of his glory on earth. That's it. God has positioned you. He has imputed his dignity on your life. He has imputed, oh, come on, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, you are a chosen generation. You are divine royalty. Come on, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. You reign in life as king. Don't be like, don't, don't, don't be a slave anymore. You are positioned like he was telling you, positioned. And he's making all his goodness available to you. Will you take it? Will you seize it? If only you will look out for the glory of God, things begin to change for you. If only you will mind the glory of God in your personal and Otherwise, life, I put it to you in the name of Jesus. I said, things begin to align around you. No, no, I'm not joking. It's the truth. Somebody said, glorify God, glorify God. What does it mean? He said, ah, 
You can't add to his glory. You can't make it elong- more elongated. You can't make it bigger. Simply put, always recognize his glory in everything you do. And always acknowledge it in everything you do. Is it your marriage? Is it your health? Is it your finances? Is it your relationships? I mean, just see his glory. Jesus said, my mate is to do the will of him that called me, that sent me, and to finish it. And then in John 17, 4, he said, Father, I have glorified me. Why? I have finished the work. So how do you bring about his glory? Mind his glory in everything you do. Be conscious of it. Number two, he will also have first praise. If you are conscious of his glory, you will know that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by his spirit. You'll be grateful to him. Number three, Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want that to go out. When you ordinarily wake up in the morning, say, ah, oh, when nobody is hearing you, when nobody is hearing you, when there's somebody to impress, nobody. Baba, oh, Lord, on your bed, on that you do me, on that you do me. There's no music, nothing. Oh, Lord, oh, God, oh, he say he who offers praise glorifies me you are telling him that i am mindful of your glory as i get out of bed tonight today and you have some issues you say father in the name you are fellowship with him in your prayers every fellowship of prayer pull down the glory of God. And I was thinking, I said, don't you see? Start chatting with somebody you don't know before. You become fond of them. What about chatting with God? On a regular basis. And the subject of your chat is how can we glorify you here? You bring down the glory when you are fellowshipping in the word. Again, Second Corinthians chapter 4. He said, where the village is, we see face to face. He said, and the more we, put, we, see, we keep at it, he said, the more we are changed from glory to glory into the very likeness of him. So the secret word, fellowship. 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 Do you know what? When you meet somebody who is in constant friendship with God, just greeting them, you will know. If you are like that, you will know. Even those who are not like that, those outside, they will know. Say, because when you carry yourself, when your conduct is with, look, with regard to the fact that, look, I am an instrument of his glory. Even when they revile you, they will turn back at the time to say, hey, hey, there is something there. Will it attract some troubles? Of course. When God makes you a lighthouse, everyone looking for salvation will will, will drift towards you. And every agent of the devil trying to destroy them will come, trying to stop the light too. But there is no stopping the light. Because in him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shines in the light. In the darkness. So get ready. No matter how low you are, you are coming up in the name of Jesus. 
That's what its glory does. No matter how high you are, God says, I'm not yet done with you. Because the path of the righteous is as a shining light. And the what? It shines brighter. There is more. The rest of your life, I promise you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, trouble or no trouble, will be the best of your life. In the name of Jesus, I want to satisfy God. Please, you try too hard. That's the problem. As he seek his glory, he knows the need of your life. Say, seek ye first the king, my king. Nobody, nobody. Ah, you are looking for help where there's no help. Seek his glory. He orders the steps of every man. Even the most arrogant king, he will put up, he will put your body in the heart. You will cry. Somebody say it takes three connections to reach anybody in the, on, in, on, on earth. Just three. Shall we rise? Shall we just give him praise and give him honor and worship him and adore him? Just adore him. Worship him. Your tomorrow is better than your today. In the name of Jesus, I see his glory upon your life. You are an instrument of his glory. God will not demand where he has not planted. He's glorifying your life. He's decking your life specially with dignity. Abundance, spiritual, emotional and physical. Can you trust him? Just lift your hand again and just tell him, I trust you, Lord. I appreciate you, Lord. Give him praise. Give him honor. Hallelujah. 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 If you've been part of this service and you don't know Jesus, you're yet to, I mean, to make him the Lord of your life. You're yet to open the door. I want to challenge you today. That is the, that's the best thing you can do. It's the best decision you can ever make uh, so if you are saying yes i want him because he first loved you even when you don't know he has died for you waiting for you waiting for today so if you are saying i'm ready then can you lift up your two hands you can join them for me please help me join them say lord jesus thank you for saving me by dying in my place I thank you because now I know you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And now I know that you are able to cleanse me of my sins. So please cleanse me of my sins. Fill me with your spirit. And henceforth, use me for your glory. I give you all the praise. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. It says I will do it that the Father may be glorified. God will be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. Father, I commit all these ones to you in the name of Jesus. Whether real or virtual, Father, take all the glory. Perfect what he started in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want you to bless the Lord with your substance. Glory, 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 glory. You can make the transfers. They'll put the information on and you can begin to get your envelopes ready father even as we do that we thank you because we can never pay for your blessings <laughs> and we can never bribe you with what what who are we what do we have we just want to show our appreciation and in line with the demands of your word so father we give today in worship and we know that it will be a blessing to someone it will be a blessing to the house uh, in the name of Jesus and we know that your name indeed will be glorified uh, and even as your word has promised men will never stop giving to us in good measure praise them shaking together and running over in the name of Jesus and for every title we rebuke the devourer now in the name of Jesus father we give you praise in Jesus name we pray sometimes you don't listen to this kind of prayer but some people do I'm waiting for your testimony. In Jesus' name. All right.
Please don't squeeze the money. Don't be ashamed of what you are giving. If all you can afford is 10 cobble, please give it. Come on with pride. Give it confidently. Today is 10 cobble. Tomorrow it will be 10 million naira. Don't hide it. Don't squeeze it. When you squeeze it, it's not useful to anybody. We can't even open it. It gets torn. And yet you want it to produce for you. Because God will honor your giving in Jesus' name. So please leave it out. Stretch it out. Give it. Don't squeeze it. Someone will put it in. They will squeeze it. Put an envelope. And squeeze the envelope too. Now, come on. It is where we be in Jesus' name. We're about to share the grace and we're about to do it. I mean, we're about to do it. But can I crave your indulgence to please rise up? Uh, shall we celebrate Jesus in this house? Come on, give him your best. Give him your best. Give him your best. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, he's the convener. He gathered us here to feed us to bless us give him praise give him praise give him praise give him praise hallelujah what a savior father we worship you Woo. take all the glory take all the glory take all the glory there will be noise of hallelujah in your homes I said this week and to be for the end of the year there will be big celebrations of glory there will be shouts of joy in 
in the name of Jesus. Woo. I, I feel the fire in my stomach. The devil is hungry. I say, if you know that you know that, look, this year, they will shout. They shout to join your house. You shout. Shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Put the devil to shame. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and this very sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy will follow us and follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. So sin shall not have dominion over it because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell. Uh -uh. Quickens your mortal body. That is, this is your physical body. God by his spirit will give you life to the glory of his name. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.